Well, hello loves and happy Sunday to you. Look at these cuties. I made these little Valentine Day um, pieces for my granddaughters. And I thought I would share the process with you and share one of them with you. So today I'm starting on six by nine MDF board and I'm just using some vintage hymn pages and putting those down with my deco art map medium getting them nice and um, attached to that um, MDF board. Now I'm just taking some gesso and a palette knife and just skimming over that, pushing those papers back, allowing some of that to peek through and um, just kind of neutralizing that and getting it ready for all of the layers that we're going to put on. So now I'm just going to take that gesso and this is the Little Flowers stencil and I'm just going to take some gesso on my finger and push it through that stencil and what this is doing is it's just creating really great texture. It's creating that outline of those flowers. Um, I'm also laying it down right into my wet gesso and it kind of creates a really cool effect too. Um, but th those little flowers just show up in all the right spots and um, creates just the perfect delicate texture. So all of the supplies are going to be listed on the blog and you can check it out there. The link below is below in the description box on YouTube. So I'm working with high flow acrylics today. These are just so much fun, delicious color, and they, they work just, they look very similar to watercolor. I just love them. And so I'm working with some green gold and um, it goes a little yellow, but that's okay. The green really shows up once it's dry. And I'm just placing them in kind of opposite corners and just getting my initial color laid down because I'm going to add some cerulean blue to that and watch it mix, it's just so lovely. Making sure I drip it around, and then I just pick it up lightly with a paper towel to um, kind of make sure that those layers are gonna show through and it's not too watery too. But as soon as I look at how that just begins to just melt together with that green gold, this blue, and it makes almost a turquoise, a phthalo color. It's just, oh, so yummy. And I love using fluid acrylics in this application because it gives me such an unexpected feel. You just don't really know what you're gonna get and you get all those runs and those drips and then when it dries, it's so soft. It's wonderful for under layers to make sure that all of your papers and things that you're doing show through. Give it a spritz of alcohol to really get some modeling effect and then give it a dry and look at how pretty that dries. I just love it. So now I'm using some nickel azo gold and um, just smushing it with, I, my fingers are what? I keep dipping my fingers into my paint water and just smushing it out. Again, giving it a real watercolor feel really soft, really translucent so that the papers show through. And what the and the, one of the reasons why I use the fluid acrylic is it just melts into all the cracks and the crevices, all the texture that was created with that stencil and the gesso. So now I'm putting down some quinacridone violet and that violet and that gr green gold just are so stunning next to each other. Then when you get it on top of that blue, it goes more purple. It's just so lovely. One thing you have to consider when you're working with translucent color is what the color is underneath because it will mix um, and create another color, which I love. So I just grabbed one of my Scribble Marks stencils and just I'm starting to just really kind of hone in the background, add some interest, pull all of the colors together. And 
and I have an idea at this point as to where my hearts are going to go and what where it's going to go. So I'm working around that area um, to add the interest towards the outer edges because I know that I'm going to be painting my heart on there. So initially I was going to use my brayer, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't cover up all that lovely color. And on one, I did a really good job. And on the other one, I did get a little bit too much gesso on it, but it, you know, it all works out. Um, they needed to be the same, but different for my granddaughters. Um, and so they, they are. So I used my large palette knife initially to get some skipping. And I didn't feel like I was getting enough coverage, so I went to my square palette knife where I have a lot more control as to where I can place my gesso and get some good dragging. And on one piece, I really had really great light gesso, and on the other piece, I felt like it was a little too heavy. So I love using these two techniques together where I will trowel or pull the paint across with my palette knife and then I smooth out some of the edges and I apologize for my head in the video um, but I love coming back and smoothing out some of those hard edges and really giving it that shadowy look it's really great for blending into the background And I'm not sure why I felt like I needed more on the one on the left, more gesso, because then I was like, oh, now I have too much. So um, I dried it a little bit and I wanted to come back and put some alcohol on my rag and pull it back and get that scratchy kind of um, worn look. And that's what I did to kind of bring back some of that color. All right, so I'm just going to sketch out my hearts and I wanted to make sure that I had them in the right spot because I knew I was going to put that butterfly down and I wanted to have enough room for the butterfly. I wanted the hearts to be kind of wonky and silly and fun and playful and so that's why I made them kind of oddly shaped. And I'm using um, quinacridone magenta to just sketch out my heart. Then I'm coming back in with my high flow acrylics with that um, uh, quinacridone violet to really kind of give it some color and some shading. And I love using my finger in this application because it really gives it a kind of a fun, um, unexpected feel instead of, instead of a paintbrush look. So now I just want to start adding the final touches to these pieces. And I wanted it to feel like those hearts were coming out of the heart and um, really kind of playing off of those colors. So again, I'm using quinacridone magenta and just extending that color across the piece and equalizing that um, out throughout the rest of the piece. Had some vintage butterflies that the girls love, so I put those down. And then I, it's important that I went back and I covered the whole piece with um, matte medium because it gives me the same surface and a nice kind of grit of a surface to put my shading down with because sometimes the high flows can give it a little bit of a slick feel so I went back with matte medium all over I also put down I just printed out the words that I wanted for the Valentine for, for the girls and um, put those down with matte medium as well and then just began to do my shading all around the butterfly and the heart and the words around some of the hearts and different things like that just some scribbles 
just really adding interest and bringing attention to the focal point. And those hearts are part of an, uh, another one of the Scribble Marks stencil. More Scribble Marks stencils. I told you these are going to be my go-to, my favorites. They're just perfect for backgrounds. And I just did X's and O's, of course. And then went to my stars and hearts stencils. This, these little hearts are just perfect. And again, I wanted them to come out of that, kind of connect everything together and create that vignette so that everything looks connected. And then I will just kind of finesse this a little bit, add some shading, um, add a few more marks and we are done. Super easy, super fast, fun project. And one of these um, is going to be available for you in the resource library. If you are a subscriber, you can check that out. You guys have the password. If you're not a subscriber, you can sign up. There is a link below in the description box. Um, I hope you liked the project and I hope that um, you subscribe and watch any other projects that I have and I will see you next week. Well, hello, lovies. Happy Sunday. Look at this happiness. Look at how absolutely adorable. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so I talked through the video of everything that I did. Super quick and super fast projects today. These are actually for my granddaughters for Valentine's Day. And so I thought I'd turn on the camera and let you watch. Um, I, nothing really complicated or special. I did use my high flows, which I positively love, love, love using them. The colors are fantastic, super easy to blend, just yummy, yummy goodness. Um, I used my Sharpie, so, but I went over everything in the video. I won't do it again. <laughs> um, uh, I don't have anything really huge to share with you today. I just wanted to share this project. I have been, it has been a, a crazy week and I've been sick and been at the doctors and so um, it's just, it's just been one of those weeks and so um, I want you guys to know that you guys have my whole heart. I'm just so incredibly grateful for you. I just, I'm always amazed at your emails that I get every week and your little notes that you send on your orders and stuff like that it just it just encourages me all the time so anyway i wanted to say too that one of these um i'm not sure which one yet one of these will be free for you to download um, for valentine's day if you would like it'll be in the subscriber resource library and um, you can download that and send that to a favorite loved one or send it to yourself or whatever um, and use it however you would like. So I just wanted to give that to you as a gift and I hope that you have a wonderful Sunday and I'm going to be back. I'm going to be better by next week, I promise, and we'll be back to normal. But just a short Sunday inspiration today, my friends. I love you and um, I hope you get some rest today and I hope that you always, always know that you are loved. <laughs>